Now, outside of the Robert Sheet Academy, Autumn plays the guitar, often volunteers at a tutor, as a tutor at Ivy Hill Elementary. But what Autumn really loves to do most is baking, as if she's not well-rounded enough, baking and being exposed to different cultures and cuisines as she travels. In high school, Autumn plans to expand her talent in culinary arts and aspires to be a mental health professional, and that deserves an extraordinary round of applause. Need it now more than ever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Miss Autumn Denard. Autumn, all yours. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One more time for Autumn Denard. While you're in the mood to applaud and standing, this, this is the Robert Treat Academy Chorus. Put your hands together for them. The Robert Treat Academy Chorus, who will be leading us in the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. It's a good looking chorus. That's the Robert Treat Academy Chorus. I ask everyone to be seated. So, let me allow me to introduce myself. My name is Steve Adubato, Jr. Uh, it was our dad, Teresa, Michelle. Our dad, uh, Steve Adubato, Sr., who Pretty confident is looking down right now, micromanaging in his own mind as to what he would do differently. Let's make sure we start on time. Let's keep things moving. Don't hold the mayor up. You know. He would be so proud of them. As you are proud of them, as every parent, every friend, every grandparent, every teacher, every administrator, every board member, everyone connected to these young men and women. I can't imagine how proud you are because I I was just at our, our son Chris graduated from uh, high school just the other day, heading to Syracuse, and I know he's, he, you kept asking me, Dad, why are you crying? They'll never know. They'll never know. But you know. You know. As parents and grandparents, you know about them. You know how hard they worked. You know how many late nights, early mornings, just studying, forget about all the extracurricular activities. Talented, hardworking, grit, Newarkers. Put your hands together for Brick City, Newark, New Jersey, and its best. So, 
So, Mr. Mayor, I know as an educator, as an administrator, not only as a prominent elected official in this city, state, and nation, you understand better than most as a former principal at Central what it takes. As a Norker, you understand what it takes. You appreciate what these young men and women have accomplished more than most. So to you, to the other elected officials here, to our chair of the board, our vice chair of the board, to our principals, to our uh, former leader, my sister, uh, Teresa, to the team at the North Ward Center led by Michelle, to you, Mom, put your hands together for Fran Arabata. <laughs> yes, she is the one behind that mask. But uh, our current leader, uh, the principal, who uh, leads in the way that uh, my dad would have been proud of, that I know my sister is proud of. Um, he will provide what is technically called the principal's address, but I'm sure he's going to share not just the accomplishments, but his own personal reflections. Put your hands together for our principal, Marcelino Trillo. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, good morning, everybody. All right, some special and sincere thanks to all the dignitaries that could take time out of their hectic schedules to be with us today. We appreciate it. Um, Senator Ruiz, Mayor Baraka, Councilman Ramos, we know uh, your thoughts are with us. I hope you enjoy the ceremony and take pride in being part of the extended RTA family. Uh, we appreciate your support and friendship, and as you all know, it's a very special family to be a part of. Uh, thank you to the Robert Reed Academy Board of Trustees for supporting and guiding us through these unique times and for entrusting Mr. Parada and myself with the privilege of leading Robert Reed Academy. President Dator, Vice President Davis, we thank you. Another special gesture of appreciation to our founding organization, without whom any of this would be possible. The Northward Center was the entity that enabled Big Steve to bring his vision for a strong family-oriented community to life. We are honored to continue to carry out his mission of elevating our community through Robert Reed Academy and privileged to enjoy the continued support and friendship of the Northward Center under the leadership of their CEO, Michelle Adubato. Thanks, Michelle. All right, with that aside, on to today's guests of honor, the class of 2022. What an adventure you must have had these past nine years. Most of you started at RTA in August of 2013. I don't know, sounds like a long time ago to you guys, but it's passed in a blink of an eye for most of the people here watching you today. Um, those of you that joined on later than 2013 became a part of this special group of students rather quickly. Through your elementary years, you distinguished yourself as a class with a great deal of personality. We knew we had a special class on our hands very early on in the process. Uh, we all watched as you developed your different talents and gifts and started to form into the amazing young men and women that you are today. Then suddenly, about halfway into your sixth grade year, the world came to a screeching halt and uncertainty became your new normal. The people you counted on most had more questions than answers. The way your education was delivered for the remainder of your sixth and seventh grade years was completely new and sometimes being invented on the fly. Your social experiences were tremendously limited. Despite these tough times and incredibly challenging circumstances, you made it here today. So give yourselves a hand. Um, while being here today to receive your diplomas uh, is a testament to your hard work and your resiliency, I am sure that you realize that there are some people you should be very thankful for in your life. Uh, first of all, how's about we hear it for your parents? How's about a hand for your parents? So parents, thank you. Uh, Mr. Prada and I, and I know firsthand very well the challenges and concerns that came with managing a family with school-aged children during this uh, crazy time. You should be very proud of the children you're raising. They're a great class. Of course, the staff at Robert Reed Academy also deserves a hand. <laughs> Teachers, staff, everybody that's a part of the mission, 
Um, thank you for your efforts to deliver on the mission of RTA to provide students with a stellar academic foundation and numerous and unique educational opportunities in a supportive and caring environment. What a fantastic sense of pride so many of us are feeling today, knowing that our efforts were not in vain. Um, there's one more very special person who deserves your appreciation. Uh, while Mr. Prada, Ms. Rago, Ms. Del Toro, and myself are excited that you are the first class to graduate under our care as administrators, I think we all know who your principal is, Ms. Adubato. Thank you, Teresa, for guiding us all through this process. I know you are very proud of all the students and the staff, and we thank you for the school culture and climate you've created for all of us to share in. Almost got you crying. Oh, I got you. All right, good. <laughs> if it wasn't going to be you, it was going to be me. So I'll be there with you in a minute, I'm sure. OK, back to you guys. The class of 2022 has distinguished themselves among the other graduating classes. You are 18th class. Not only are they unique because of their previously mentioned grit and personality, but also because of their accomplishments. You have successfully navigated your way through the pandemic, and as proof, 48 of you will be graduating with honors or high honors today. You have led RTA through our own personal road back. I've said repeatedly in morning announcements that this year is the year that we survive so that next year we can all thrive. Thank you for demonstrating leadership all throughout this school year as the senior class of Robert Reed Academy. This was the most drama-free group of eighth graders that I can recall, and as, a, as an administrator and your teachers, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, we also have students who will be attending new schools, high schools for the first time, uh, among them Taft, Chapel Hill, and Oak Knoll expanding the reach of the RTA network. This class also includes our 1,000th graduate. And this one's gonna be the big applause and kinda how I'm gonna finish. Most notably, the class of 2022 received the most scholarship and financial aid in the history of our 18 graduating classes to date, with an amazing $8 million offered to our graduates. I will leave you by thanking you for living by the advice that we start our day with every morning. Work hard, be the best that you can be, be kind to one another, and make good choices. Thank you for being such an amazing group of young people, and please know that although you graduate today, you will always be a part of the RTA family. Okay, I think everyone's, that's enough from me, uh, so let's get on with the ceremony and get these diplomas in your hands. Uh, here with the musical interlude, interlude is the RTA chorus led by Mr. Ulrich Rejoui and featuring soloist Kaylin, Kylan Campbell, Ethan De Jesus, Crystal Santiago, Alexa Leva Carrasco, Victoria Correa da Silva, Victoria Romero, and Rest Afalabi performing a little more homework. stand here behind me and you call me a man and you're counting on me to come through you should know that i'll give you the best that i can but we all have a little more homework to do if you're walking beside me 
and you want to be friends you should know one depending on you so you gotta hang in till the whole story ends cause we all have a little more homework to do and i've been looking in the back of the book for the answers hoping the bell wouldn't chime but i'm not ready to put down my pencil just yet there are too many answers that i didn't get i need a little less pressure and a little more time i am trying to follow i am trying to lead i am trying to find what is true but if you're gonna stand with me, you have to concede that we all have a little more homework to do. Today turns today, turns today, turns today, turns today, turns today. You get a little bit older, a little bit taller, a little bit better, a little bit. Day turns today, turns today, turns today, turns today, and the day. Before I go too fast, you can't hold on, so you go. You get a little bit older, a little bit stronger, a little bit smarter, a little bit. And the day ahead comes on, go quick, you can't get out of where you keep running now. Put your hands together for the Robert Reed Academy Chorus. Uh, and as the chorus leaves the performing area, um, I am pleased to introduce our keynote speaker, Mayor Raz J. Baraka, as our keynote speaker for our commencement exercises this year. Mayor Baraka is the 40th mayor of the city of Newark. He is a native of Newark whose family has lived in the city for more than 80 years. Since taking office in 2014, his progressive approach to governing has won him accolades from grassroots organizations all the way to the White House. His commitment to reducing crime in Newark, reimagining public safety, 
tackling the city's housing crisis and developing innovative and community-driven approaches to eliminating income inequality has solidified his status as one of our country's most progressive elected officials. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the mayor of the great city of Newark, the Honorable Raj J. Barak. Thank you. It's a great day uh, to both principals. Trio Prada, thank you for inviting me and ha having me a part of this ceremony today. Thank you to the Adubato family for having the courage and the conviction to uh, start the Robert Reed Academy and hang on in there and help hundreds and hundreds of young people uh, in this city in very difficult times uh, at some points to graduate and do incredible things and many of them come back to help us in Newark over and over again. So thank you and your commitment to the city uh, has not gone unnoticed, so thank you. Thank you to all of the teachers and faculty members and parents uh, that are here today. And most importantly, thank you and congratulations class of 2022. So I'm gonna ask us out in the audience to do just a little bit better than that because this is a transition period for them, and as an educator, I know it's probably one of the most difficult transitions they'll go through in their life, from eighth grade to high school is the most difficult transition, so they need all the encouragement they can get. So let's show them that we love them today. Come on, y'all. They, they, they absolutely positively need that sometimes. In fact, most of the time they won't admit that they need it, but they do. It's very difficult and sometimes we forget uh, how difficult it is to be in the seventh and eighth grade, to be a middle schooler, to enter in high school the first year, uh, the bigger classroom, more people, different things going on, not used to your family and friends not being there as much. You know, it's difficult. And sometimes they're gonna come home uh, and need you to talk to them or sit by them or comfort them. Uh, and this is a time period where we need to be doing that at our best right now. Because they've shown right now today, being here in the middle of this pandemic, that they have the power, the ability, uh, the creativity, the creativity, the stick to itness to make it to this point. And so they deserve our attention, our respect, our love, our upliftment, our foundation, our arms around them at all times, right? Right, parents? So, I'm not gonna be long, but I, I was at the U.S. Conference of Mayors. It's a, a conference that we all go to, mayors all across the country. We come and we talk about issues that we all deal with, uh, and you'd be surprised about all of the issues that we all have in common, whether they're big cities or rural towns. Uh, and one of the things we were talking about was the infrastructure bill that's been passed and all of the money that's available to build roads and bridges and internet and broadband and all of these things that are available uh, that are gonna be coming to cities and states and counties across the country. And one thing that they said that stuck with me is that some of this stuff will not able to be accomplished no matter how much money they have because they don't have enough talent to get it done. They said they're missing tens and thousands of engineers across the country to actually do the work that people are talking about that we need to build bridges, but who's gonna build them? That we need to fix waterways, but who's going to create them? Where the architects and the engineers are gonna come from to help us move this country into the next millennium? And I thought to myself that there are a bunch of kids in Newark, a bunch of kids in Newark that are being overlooked right now, that they are not identifying when they say that they need engineers, that they might not be thinking about our kids in Newark, but the first thought that came to my mind was there are kids in schools all over Newark by themselves in those classrooms hiding beneath all of the things that are going on that are the engineers that they're looking for. In fact, if they just came right here in the North Ward to this cathedral, this beautiful basilica, and witnessed the students at Robert Treat Academy, I'm sure that they can find more than a dozen engineers. that could help them do the work that they're doing. And sometimes we get overlooked because not only do people overlook us, but we hide ourselves. We hide the beauty that God has put in us. 
we hide everything that was given to us, trying desperately to fit in with everybody else. I know a little bit of something about, about that because most of my life, at the beginning of my years, I tried to fit in with everybody else. I tried to be what everybody else was being and do what everybody else was doing and hang out where everyone else was hanging out. And I overlooked myself. Never mind people overlooking me, I overlooked myself, I overlooked my talent, the ability that God placed in me that's right here. And when I began to figure that out, when I began to understand who I was and be okay with being different and understand that God made me different on purpose, that he made me different so I could stand out. He made me different so I could be an example. He made me different so I could lead, not so I could hide. And so when I realized that hiding was doing me a disservice, I started everything that I needed to do to be able to be out front. And I'm asking you today to stop hiding. Stop hiding beneath all of the things that are going on. Stop giving yourself excuses. And sometimes you have to be provoked. And my job here today is to provoke you, not provoke you to uh, do what everybody else is doing or provoke you to prove that you're, you're better than everybody else, but provoke you to find that thing in you that God placed in you when you were a child, when you were in your mother's womb, that God placed in you. I'm trying to provoke you. You know like how players provoke Michael Jordan on the court or they provoke Steph Curry and they wish they didn't provoke them because they found something in them uh, during the game and they get 30 and 40 points after they got provoked. That's the kind of provocation I'm talking about. And so God provokes us all the time. He gives us a pandemic. He knocks us down. He takes us through many things. Not to uh, uh, make us feel bad or humiliate us or make us retreat, but make us find the best in us. The thing that helps us overcome challenges. The thing that helps us experience the things that we need to experience to become the people that we have to become in order to make the changes we want to make. I want to close on this. My son, I have a three-year-old. He thinks he's Spider-Man. <laughs> Seriously. He runs around the house and he goes like this. And sometimes I think there's actually things coming out of it. So I look. Is it, maybe he's seeing something I don't see. But he really believes that. He takes his head and he pushes it against my legs. And he pushes me and pushes me. And I go back with him. I play along with him. So he believes that he's strong. And now he does it every day. Now he thinks he can do it. He actually believes that he's pushing me. So he does it harder. Each time he does it harder and harder and harder. And I said, this kid really believes he's a superhero. And uh, I realized now that he's right and I'm wrong. That he actually is a superhero. That he might really be Spider-Man. And as a child, you begin to think that you can do superhuman things. Incredible and outrageous, even magical things. Extraordinary things that most people won't even believe. But the good thing about it, in order for you to do it, it doesn't take other people to believe it, just you. And he really believes that. And when he comes to school, I fear that when he gets in the third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, eighth grade, high school, that somebody's going to convince him that he's not Spider-Man. That somebody's going to make him believe that he's not a superhero. And if that happens, he is going to ruin his ability to do incredible, fantastic, enormous things that people could not even imagine. Because he believes in his heart that he's greater, more incredible than anybody could ever imagine. And what we do as adults, we tell you every day, you can't do this. This is impossible. You can't make this happen. This can't be created. We turn your question marks into periods. And I'm telling you, that I'm trying my best to make my son believe that he's Spider-Man at three years old. So when he becomes 33 years old, he still believes he's Spider-Man. And I'm telling you today that you are a superhero. And I know in the, in the middle of your imagination, you believe that you can do incredible things. I know there are places you go in your mind that nobody else can come. That there are things that you think you can build and create and invent that nobody has done. Places you want to go that people have never been. And I'm telling you that those things are real. That's not just a figment of your imagination. That is in you for real. And your job now, today, is to find that in yourself and make it happen. Make it happen, not just today, but every day after today. Because your future depends on your habits. And so I'm telling you today, <laughs> make your habits extraordinary. Make people think you're crazy, like you, this guy is out of his mind. Do things that people would never do. You can do it, as a matter of fact, 
We need you to do it. We counting on you to do it. The world will not be what it is if you don't do the things that you dream of doing that you never told anybody in your life. God bless you and God speed to you. Congratulations, class of 2022. Put your hands together for our mayor, Raz Baraka. Spider-Man. You know, there are a lot of, uh, we've been to a lot of graduation ceremonies, there are a lot of keynote or uh, commencement speeches, and most people look at their watches and like, when's this gonna end? Mayor Baraka, uh, I know I speak for all the folks, not just in our personal blood family, but the Robert Treat Academy family, the North Ward Center family, the family of Newark. Uh, we're, we're proud of you. And it's not my job as a journalist to praise people in public life, because, you know, it's not my job. But for this city, you've been a superhero for a long time. Keep fighting the fight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And you know, I talked about my dad looking down uh, today, being proud. I, I'm confident that your dad uh, doing the same thing, a leader committed to this city in, in ways people can't imagine. It is not in the program, because I'm about to uh, introduce in just a couple of minutes our valedictorian. By the way, by a show of applause, how many people want to meet the valedictorian? How many people want to meet the valedictorian? But just, let me tell you something. One more person you're going to hear from. Talk about someone who, while she has very lofty titles, understands these young men and women. Understand? Can I just do this first? Okay. Um, she understands these young men and women. She understands education. She understands urban education. She's committed not just to her own daughter's education, but the education of every child in this city. Um, she's on the run, just like the mayor and everyone else. But before she left, I wanted to ask, she happens to be the former chair of the Senate Education Committee in the state, the current majority leader in the state senate, but comes out of the North Ward Center, the Child Development Center, a teacher who understands child care, who understands education, who loves these kids. Put your hands together for State Senator Teresa Ruiz. Good morning, everyone. I'm not going to keep you, I, I saw, is it Janice or Janice? Janus, I'm not going to keep you because I saw Janus. Janus, I'm not going to keep you. I saw you making your way down here, and uh, I know you're going to deliver better remarks than than what even the mayor said. But to the mayor, thank you for inspiring me this morning. How fortunate we are in this city, in this state, to have people in public service who have been educators at their core all of the time. That we understand that while people are talking about infrastructure money. When the mayor and I and so many of your elected re representatives talk about infrastructure improvement, we're talking about investment in human capital. And so I'm here today not only as your state representative, but I'm here as a proud parent of a 2022 graduate from the Robert Treat Academy also. Now, I know all of you are thinking, well, if you have a, a, a child graduating, why are you going to leave? She graduated yesterday from the kindergarten class. So just to be clear, uh, as a parent, as a founding member of, of the Robert Treat Academy, as someone who grew up on Clifton Avenue and was raised blocks away from there was just an open patch of grass that used to be a community garden, to see kind of those conversations that we had with Big Steve and Fran and Teresa and so many others in that space, to see the school and in the first years to see my preschool was the first graduates out of the Robert Treat Academy. It reminds me of one thing, I'm old. <laughs> but I am uh, empowered and I am fulfilled. I know many of you for a long time since you were babies and a lot of you are going to be leaving and going to boarding schools. And I sit back in awe. And so just to echo and say ditto and amen to the things that the mayor said. Love is a verb. It requires action and a lot of work. Living life is an active verb. It requires action and a lot of work. 
People will define you. They will create expectations for you. They will remand you to spaces where you never thought you should fit, but almost make it seem as if it was a part of your life. And to them, you have to show them who we are here in Brick City. We are the foundation from where everything starts. There is nothing stronger than what you have been given today. Don't question yourself, love yourself. And when you fall, cherish that moment because the best thing about falling is how you get up. People will be, people like to see people fall. And I say, you know what? I'm a human being, I'm fallible. So I will make mistakes all of my life. And Mayor, to my daughter, she thinks I'm Wonder Woman and I'm not gonna lie to her. I'm 47 years old and I still think I'm Wonder Woman in my head. People till this day, as a grown adult and as a woman, feel that I should be a specific kind of way. And I say this specifically to the young women in the classroom. And this is no disrespect to our young men because you will be tried. But women, you will be asked to do things twice Three times over, don't let anyone dim that light inside of you because we are the givers of life. We are protectors of this world. We have the power to give on. We can make things happen. We do not generate wars. We find solutions. And also today, you're going to hear it. It's the valedictorian who happens to be a young woman. Congratulations to the class of 2022. May you be guided. May, may your faith keep you. Above all, be guarded. And I wasn't raised during this time frame because I'm going to out you, Mayor, with uh, your age. We didn't have cell phones and we didn't have cameras. Think about it. I know you say that all in the morning. Think about it before you post it because and then it's forever. And even when it's forever, you can always get up and say, I am sorry and ask for forgiveness and be true in that space. But think about it. Some things are personal and private and they should be kept that way. Protect yourselves. We love you in Newark. And above all, I'm getting up in age. I need you to come back so that you take care of all of us. Thank you and congratulations. One more time for State Senator Teresa Ruiz. Uh, you know, it's so, it's so interesting. Teresa mentioned, uh, the Senator mentioned uh, her daughter and how strong women are. It's true. Our daughter happens to be 11, Olivia. And uh, this puts, Mayor, this, this puts men in our place. Anyone ever hear anything like this? So Father's Day was come, was the other day, right? You, some people may not even recognize that. So I said uh, on Saturday, Olivia, don't go overboard for me. Don't do anything special for me, Olivia. She, she speaks her mind, trust me. She said, Dad, you know that after they made, mother, they made Mother's Day, dads like you complained, and so somebody just made up Father's Day. It's not even real. <laughs> I was checked. So the senator doesn't have to worry about women speaking their mind at 11 years of age. Speaking of uh, young women who need to be heard, how many people, once again, want to hear from our valedictorian? P.S. She was mentioned before. I keep talking about our family. My mom will be recognized later. Teresa, everybody's loving you today. Put your hands together for the executive director of the North Ward Center, Michelle Arabato. So, so, Michelle, you weren't the valedictorian. You weren't the valedictorian. I definitely was not the valedictorian. Sounds like Oprah. You get a car. You get a car. Uh, Janice, you mind if I tell them something about you? This is Janice Zampari, who is our valedictorian. Put your hands together. So Janice, let me, let me see if I get this right. If I'm wrong, clearly you'll correct me. She has a great point average of I can't even calculate this high. 4.46. <laughs> out of four? Out of four. It's an extraordinary accomplishment in any year, but especially in 2022. Janice is a member of the National Junior Honor Society, participated in the Robert Treat Academy Chorus and Crafts Yearbook Club, is the Student Council President, again, a <laughs> couple of other things about Janice. She is the recipient of the Stephen N. Adubato Founders Award for Overall Excellence, twice, and the Academic Achievement Award. Janice plays volleyball, participates 
in her church choir. She loves to sing, spend time with her family. Janice has dreams of pursuing medicine and forensic science. Medicine and forensic science. Could you imagine? The timing's pretty good. In high school, Janice plans to travel and study abroad, expand her research in different parts of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the Robert Treat Academy 2022 valedictorian, Janice Zimpare. Good afternoon, honored guests, administration, staff, families, and of course, the class of 2022. I am extremely honored to be able to stand up here in person today as your valedictorian to share in this incredible moment of celebration. The last two years were nothing we had expected to face. Transitioning to in-person schooling after being online for a year and a half was not easy, but necessary. We had to get our grades back up to where we wanted them to be, socialize again, and adapt to ever-changing rules and protocols. We had to accomplish all of this while applying for high school, which was challenging to say the least. However, we did not let that stop us from putting our best effort into our education. I know I personally set goals for myself and made sure to complete my schoolwork while also meeting all our deadlines. Although it was very stressful, I managed to get all of it done and I was accepted into Deerfield Academy where I'll be attending in the fall. I am so proud of how far this class has come despite all the obstacles thrown our way. We sit here in front of you as a strong group of determined and intelligent students who will one day influence the world. High school will be a completely new chapter in our lives that will require hard work, responsibility, and diligence. The perseverance we have all developed before, during, and after the pandemic will benefit us during high school and beyond. In life, nothing is ever easy. We will face struggles that will make us feel like giving up. However, we should not let that stop us from working to achieve our goals. We should learn from our mistakes, apply the lessons we learned from them to our lives, and never give up on our dreams. I want to thank my family, friends, and teachers for supporting me throughout my experience at Robert Treat Academy. Without you all, it would have been a much harder journey to get to this point. Thank you to my mom for working hard to provide for me and encouraging me to be the best that I can be. Thank you to my dad. Right here? Yeah, she's right there. Yes, Miss Nan. <laughs> Thank you to my dad for also giving me the same support and always checking in on me. Thank you to my auntie Christiana and my uncle Eric for also taking care of me in my whole life and being there to make sure that I was healthy and happy. Thank you to my Uncle Douglas for taking me and my sister to school every morning and always thinking about us. Thank you to my cousins Abigail and Esther, and thank you to my big sister Leanna for helping me out with school, giving me motivation when I started to get off track, and being such a bright light in my life. Thank you to my best friends for loving me and accepting me for who I truly am. Thank you to my teachers for giving me new knowledge every day and for helping me and supporting me when I needed it the most. And finally, thank you to the administration, past and present, for this wonderful school and opportunity. To everyone who has guided me up to this point, I love and appreciate you. <laughs> to the class of 2022, I want to leave you with an important message from Winston Churchill. Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. We have been through so much the last few years and look at all of us here, graduating and ready for our bright futures. We should be so proud of ourselves and confident that we will continue the success and be our very best in the years to come. Congratulations and best of luck. Thank you.
Janice is finished and she deserves a great round of applause. You know, a very prominent person once said it takes a village. It takes his Empire family as well, who all were with the aunts and uncles, the cousins, the sisters, brother. One more time, the Zimpari family, why don't you just all stand up at once and get it out of the way? No, that's not the Zimpari fam. Are you the, the whole congregation got up? You got a lot, I thought we had a lot of relatives. You're gonna have a good party, right? Later. <laughs> you know, uh, every year, we've been doing this for a few years. As Mr. Parada comes up here, Paul Parada, the uh, principal of the, the Jackie Robinson campus, I'm going to ask uh, Jim and Joan Panera to come up because there are uh, nine very important scholarships to be not given out but uh, acknowledged from the uh, uh, Panera family, the Panera Memorial Scholarship Foundation. Jim and Joan Panera, come on up. Put your hands together for the uh, Panera family. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you summed it up uh, perfectly. This is a great day. Uh, 2014, uh, we lost a, um, a staff member, tragically, Jamie Panair. Uh, he was a part of us. He was a part of our family. Uh, out of that tragedy, something wonderful happened. We welcomed um, two more members to our family, and uh, the Jamie Panair Scholarship Fund was started. I'd like to introduce uh, Joan and Jim Panair. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the James A. Panair III Foundation, my husband Jim and I would like to thank the Board of Trustees, Principal Trillo and Prada, the teachers, staff, and all the graduates of the class of 2022 for inviting us to participate in this joyous occasion. We're very happy to share in the excitement of the class of 2022's graduation day. Henry Ford's famous quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, emphasizes how much attitude determines success or failure. We congratulate each of you on your achievements and hard work that have led you here today. We encourage all of you to embark on your high school journey with a confident and positive attitude that you will reap all the benefits that your high schools and continued education bring you. The James A. Panair Award is given in memory of our son, who's a member of the Robert Tree Academy uh, faculty from August 2014 until his untimely and tragic passing in December of 2014. Today, we're very pleased to present this award to nine graduates of this class. So starting off, um, attending Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall in the fall is Rest Afalabi. Mother Seton Regional High School in the fall, Angelica Garcia. <laughs> Attending St. Benedict's Prep, Ibn Lee. Janice Rivera. <laughs> A 
accompanying her to Portsmouth Abbey School, her sister Genesia Rivera. Attending La Coderre Academy, Darian Rouse. Attending George School, Kalalula Saidu. Attending the Hill School, Simon Vega. <laughs> and last but not least, Attending Deerfield Academy, Janice Sempera. class of 2022. Put your hands together for the Panera family and that extraordinary scholarship fund. Yeah. So uh, our North Ward Councilman, the North Ward Councilman, uh, Aniba Ramos, comes out of this organization, understands the Robert Treat Academy on every level, uh, could not be with us today but his closest colleague professionally and good friend, um, Sam Gonzalez, his chief of staff, is with us. And you may ask, why would we do what we're about to do? But every year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Trillo, there have been two scholarships from the Aniba Ramos Civic Association that are awarded, you know, um, started back in 2014 to two of the graduates of the Robert Treat Academy um, and I'm going to ask you to join me in welcoming the Chief of Staff to the Good Councilman here in the North Ward. Put your hands together for Sam Gonzalez. Sam, come on up. Introduce two very special scholarships. Just don't want to mispronounce a last name, so I have to make verification. I begged my wife to do this for me. I don't know if you saw me. I was sitting over there. I ran around once my wife got here, worked my way all the way over to this corner, and I said, can you please do this for me? I said, Sammy, I can't. I would love to do this for you, but I got to run to deliver checks. And she just called me a little while ago. She said, honey, you're going to have to go and make dinner tonight because I'm on my way to train for the budget. So that's my, that's my day so far. It hasn't worked out. But I just want everybody to know, uh, on behalf of Councilman Ramos and the uh, Aniba Ramos uh, Junior Civic Association Board, we're so delighted to be here once again to present two young people with this scholarship. Now, I want everybody to know I know a lot of people in this room uh, for quite some time. I didn't select the two students, okay? So if you forwarded those four names, Mr. Trillo and Mr. Prada did that. So after this, you can talk to those two individuals. And I don't have a check today. And I want to tell you the good news. The checks normally were for 500. The two recipients receiving awards will be receiving $1,000, so. So 
So the councilman started this, he's been in office for the last 16 years. We started this in 2006 when he was first elected. He's going on his, uh, he's going on his fifth term starting on July 1st. So we've donated over $100,000 to students in Newark through our efforts, so we're excited about that. Again, the two recipients, one young man attending St. Benedict's, Joshua Cardenas. That's a surprise. It's a surprise for me too when I woke up this morning, Charlie, I'll be honest with you. I got a call, I was like. And Aaron Appia going to St. Vincent's Academies. Aaron. So these two young people, along as, as well as uh, uh, 14 other recipients throughout the city, will be able to come to a breakfast that we host annually. We'll have an opportunity to invite all the families. But to the class of 2022, congratulations. More importantly, you know, their achievements have everything to do with the people behind them. To all the parents and family members, God bless and thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, I'm not doing any more presentations. You guys will handle that later. Thank you, Sam. Uh, really, before we officially and formally have our class graduate, uh, any more music by a show of applause? Who wants to hear some music? Come on, we are here in Newark. People make beautiful music here. In that spirit, it's my honor to introduce our sixth grader, Ryan Ramos, who's going to perform. Put your hands together for Ryan. You just say, Ryan Ramos, look what happens. Now, Ryan's a sixth grader. She's going to perform accompanied by the uh, Robert Street Academy music staff. That's Robert Ratcliffe on the violin. Put your hands together for Robert Ratcliffe. <laughs> Heidi Griffith. Heidi Griffith on the flute. Irv Commander on the piano. Thank you, Irv. Joe Spinelli on the drums. One more time for Ryan Ramos.
come on, that deserves a bigger round of applause than that. Ryan Ramos is in the house, is in the church. Wow, she is good. Wow. You know, we, we were talking about Steve Sr. before looking down. He loved music. Mom, did he not love music? Love beautiful music. And Ryan Ramos was absolutely terrific along um, with the Robert Treat Academy uh, musical staff. So, uh, one more thing before we introduce and we present the diplomas. I'm going to ask uh, Romeo Quimis and Dylan Colon to please. Romeo, where are you? Romeo, if I said it wrong, is it Quimis? Quimis. I, put your hands together for Romeo Quimis, who corrected me in front of 3,000 people. And Dylan Cologne for, to present a very special class gift to Miss Fran Adubato. That's the lady with the mask right there in the front. You see her with the... Ma, could you at least wave? Let's bring it over. That's for Fran. That's for Fran Adubato. The first lady... Oh, and also Teresa. And how about, Teresa, no, no, you get this. And roses for the, our former principal, the Teresa Adubato, right there, yes. <laughs> Teresa, at least stand, wave, stand. Ma, can you wave to people? Wave, turn around. I know that's, just turn around, the whole thing, turn it around. All right, that's it. You've been here for an hour and 15 minutes. Who's ready to watch the graduates receive their diploma? So let's get on with it. Our board chairman, Robert Tatour. Bob, come on up. Let's hear it for our board chair and our vice president of the board, Adrienne Davis. Adrienne. Let's hear it for our chair and our vice chair, and also uh, Mr. Trillo, Mr. Prada. You are here to certify our graduates. Mr. Prada, are you ready to read the names of all of our official graduates? On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to congratulate the class of 2022. I want to also recognize their families and the teachers and the administrators that all contribute to their success. I also want to recognize a special recognition to the teachers, and you make the difference in so many lives, and we know it. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Trillo and Mr. Parada for a great year and their leadership. Now we start the process to award diplomas. By the power vested in us by the Board of Trustees of the Robert Treat Academy Charter School and in accordance with the laws and regulations of the state of New Jersey. All right. We declare that these students have met all of the requirements for graduation and therefore authorize that the class of 2022 receive their diplomas. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Trillo and Mr. Parada will present the graduates with their certificates. Mr. Trillo, we did it. We did it. Do you think they're ready? Do you think they're ready? Parent, there are, the energy in the room, by the way, has been fantastic. Parents, are you ready for this? Yeah. Let's see if they're ready. Graduates, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Graduating. With high honors, Rest Afalabi. With high honors, Joanne Akibi. With honors, London Alston. With honors, Erin Apia. With honors, Kaylee Arias. 
with honors, Saray Brooks. With high honors, Kylan Campbell. With high honors, Katherine Karchapula. Joshua Cardenas. With high honors, Ethan Carpintero. With honors, Juan Castro. Sinai Cole King. Demetrius Cathcart. With high honors, Dylan Colon. With high honors, Victoria Correa da Silva. With honors, Joel Cruz. With high honors, Layla Daly. With high honors, Ethan De Jesus. With high honors, Autumn Denard. With honors, Deira Diaz. With honors, Antifafa Zakoto. Natalie Flores. Yasleen Francisco. With honors, Robert Franco. Angelica Garcia. With high honors, Leah Garcia. With honors, Raquel Genorio. Elijah Henry. Kalila Hutchins. With honors, Brianna Johnson. Gabrielle King Price. Danny Lambertus. With high honors, Jewel Lieben. Ibn Lee. With high honors, Mia Lanus Estrada. Alexa Leva Carrasco. Seth Martin. Jarellis Melendez. Jordan Mitchell. Jose Morales. Justin Morton. Mark Murph. Yariel Ortiz Rivera. With high honors, Dave Osunde. With honors, Olivia Pacheco. With honors, Kayla Petrus. Romeo Quimis.
with honors, Angelina Reyes. Jaden Richardson. With high honors, Janice Rivera. With high honors, Jesenia Rivera. With high honors, Angelo Rodriguez. With high honors, Hector Rodriguez. With high honors, Joseph Rodriguez. With honors, Zamaya Roldan. Come on, Mr. Trello. With honors, Victoria Romero. With high honors, Jay Rosa. With honors, Darian Rouse. With high honors, Kaliula Saidu. With high honors, Crystal Santiago. With honors, Michaela Santiago. With high honors, Michelle Santiago. With honors, Dennis Smith. Dominic Smith. Javen Soto. With high honors, Simon Vega. With high honors, Valerie Vega. With honors, Galilea Velasquez Guerrero. Sebastian Vinueza. Sebastian Vizuet. With honors, Nishani Ward. With honors, William Chilo Mendez. Derek Zapata. Take it in, take it in for a little bit. Go ahead, take it in. I think you know her, our valedictorian with high honors, Janice Zampare. Every, uh, every group leaves you with something. Uh, I know I, I speak on behalf of uh, Mr. Trillo, our administration, and the teachers. Uh, this group, they're a special group. And uh, boys and girls, we're proud of you. We're going to miss you. You ready for the moment now? We, we have this moment. All right, let's go. Let's make this official. Stand up. All right. Step-by-step -step instructions here. We have to go from the left to the right. Let's go. Move it over.
There's one more thing. There's one more thing to do. Last time, one last time, as Robert Treat Academy students, you're gonna sing it again as, as, as graduates, but one last time as Robert Treat Academy students, the Robert Treat Academy school song. all about how we just earned our diplomas now and I'd like to take a minute just sit right there I'll tell you how you graduated in North New Jersey born and raised at RTA is where I spend most of my days Algebra, essays, and applying to high schools and making good choices in and out of school. For nine no years, we all did so good. Being great kids in the neighborhood. Then eighth grade came, and my mom's got scared. She said, what am I going to do when you move out next year? I sent my applications and waited half a year, but the moment finally came and my future was clear. If anything, I could say I felt so much fear, but I thought, now nah, forget it. My moment is here. I pulled up to the church about 7 or 8 and I texted my mom, Yo, homes, don't be late. I looked at my future and it's gonna be great. Walking out proud, graduate Graduates from RTA. RTA. Is this it? We're official. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the 2022 graduating class of the Robert Treat Academy. That's it. That's the show. Don't they process out? Isn't that what they do? There's an official walk out. So as they walk out, continue to applaud, give them a standing ovation. Let's do this. Congratulations, have a wonderful day.